In March of 2016, Unity 5.4 was announced, which promises to bring a lot of changes that are going to be good for VR developers. So I just want to show you in this video what uh, what's changing in Unity 5.4, especially in particular what's relevant for VR developers. All these links are going to be below the video. This is the announcement blog post announcing Unity 5.4. And if you scroll down here, there is a lot of interesting uh, updates that will be in Unity 5.4. Currently, I'm recording this in July, and Unity 5.4 is in the 24th beta right now. So it's starting to get pretty mature, but it's not, it's not released yet. So the, and there's no stable release. If you scroll down here, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff that you can read about. And I'll just skip down to the VR relevant stuff, the most relevant stuff for VR. So it's down here, and you can see here that um, there's gonna be a couple VR improvements. And the first one, uh, one is that there's gonna be more multi-platform VR support. And that just means that the Steam VR plugin is gonna be integrated into Unity. But there are some caveats there. Uh, that's not the entire Steam VR plugin. So that's just HMD tracking. And I'll show you that in a second as well. So basically that means that there's gonna be some, uh, depending on your requirements, you might not have to use one of the plugins from the asset store. So for example, SteamVR. So that's a, one thing that's been added. So that means that you're gonna be able to natively support SteamVR, Oculus Rift, Gear VR, and PlayStation VR, um, and have that through a single API. However, as I said, that's only for some experiences. And in particular, that's only gonna be for experiences where you're targeting someone with a gamepad or keyboard and mouse, where you're only tracking the HMD. The next one that's really interesting for all of us VR developers is that there will be improved VR performance thanks to the double wide rendering. And basically what that is, is that they we're gonna cut down the number of, uh, of rendering tasks that need to be done because um, it's gonna be rendering to both eyes at the same time in a single pass rather than before where it was rendering for each eye. So that's gonna definitely improve performance and cut down rendering times. And then there's a few other things that are not specific to VR, but that will nonetheless have a benefit for VR developers. So better multi-threaded rendering support. Um, and basically what that means is that they're, they're working on making the VR or the uh, Unity rendering pipeline more efficient using multi-core architectures. And so previously, all of the rendering on in Unity was done on a single thread. And now they're looking at ways of bringing that some of that rendering off of this, the main thread so that it can be done in worker threads. So for multi-core architectures, that's going to lead to an improvement on some platforms because I think uh, it only works with DirectX 12, for example, which means that it's Windows only at this point. So, But I'm sure they'll be improving that and adding that to more platforms and improving the performance there. Another interesting thing for VR developers is the GPU instancing. And basically what that is, is that they're reducing the number of draw calls that it takes to render identical architectures. So as you can see in this scene where you have many uh, architectures that are the same, so you have all these asteroids that have the same geometry and material. And the idea there is that instead of having to do a fetch and everything for each, each ind individual uh, uh, geometry, because they're all the same, they're going to be uh, reducing the number of draw calls that you need when you have a bunch of objects in a scene that are all the same, which is, uh, you know, something that makes sense. And it's going to lead to some performance increases for certain scenes when, especially if you're developing something like, you know, an asteroid field, and you know that you're going to have a lot of geometry and materials that are repeated in your scene. So that's something that's uh, also going to be very nice for VR developers, as well as all Unity developers. And what you can do also, um, as, as you scroll through this blog post, you can see some more of the changes that are coming in Unity 5.4. And another good website or another page to know about is the Unity Roadmap. So in the Unity Roadmap, you can look at this legend here, and you can always get a, a view of what's going to be coming in the next version. So you can see here the orange ones are ones that might not actually make it into Unity 5.4. But luckily, all of the stuff that is relevant for VR developers is green or teal. So it looks like that stuff will make it in. So again, we have here the single pass rendering that looks like that will make it uh, and the native Steam VR support. However, like I said, I'll get into that a little bit more, but there are some caveats there about what appears like it will be supported. And in addition to that, we also had the basic GPU instancing support. That looks like it will make it. That's the one that reduces draw calls for uh, identical geometries and materials. And the other one was the multi-threaded rendering. There's a couple other improvements here that might, we might see some gains in performance for, that will be relevant for VR, but those are the, the main ones that I'm excited for that should be coming in Unity 5.4.
If you're interested in checking out Unity 5.4, perhaps when you're watching this video, the stable F1 release is already out. If not, then you can start working with the beta. You can go to this page here and you can download the, the installer. And uh, while I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for a game that you're going to be shipping now, if you know that you're going to be you know, shipping a game in the next few months, um, it might make sense to start it on Unity 5.4 now. And that way it might be a little bit easier for you rather than starting on 5.3 and then having to migrate all of your changes for what's due in 5.4. There's also a lot of cool cinematic stuff that uh, might be relevant for you. So that's also worth checking out. But um, I've been using Unity 5.4 beta for a bit now and uh, I haven't run into any serious problems that I couldn't overcome. There's also forums that you can go and, and chat with other developers and you can bring up issues with Unity and that you can find also below this lecture where you can get to those forums as well as some more information about what actually is going to be supported in Unity 5.4 for VR. And so one of those things is that Unity will not be integrating the room scale information into Unity 5.4 as of yet. So that means that in the SteamVR plugin where you have your track volumes, that actually will not yet be part of Unity natively. And that means that you're still gonna need the SteamVR plugin if you're using a Vive, as well as the controllers. So you can read more about the room scale tracking in this thread. And there's a couple other threads that talk about the inputs. In the meantime, you can also look at the scripting API for 5.4 beta. And you can see in the Unity VR package, you can see what uh, APIs are available to you. And the most important ones here are the input tracking which allows you to get the local position and the local rotation of the requested VR node and recenter it. Now this VR node is an enum and that's basically referring to which volume you wanna track. But in this case, basically all we have is the, the eyes and the head. And most of the time you're just gonna want head. So you, you, what you do here is you call the input tracking and you pass, you know, get local rotation and position and then you pass in the VR node that you'd like. And that's just an enum, so you just type, you know, get local rotation, and then in brackets, you go VR node dot head, for example. And as far as devices go, they have some more information about, you know, you can start polling for which devices are attached. So you can have a look in there and see what is natively built into Unity that you don't need to use a specific SDK for. And I would recommend that you, as much as possible, use what Unity is giving you, because over time, this, the unification of these SDKs will continue. And eventually, the hope is that you won't really need to worry about which VR device your user is currently on, besides for things like you know, in some cases where you know that it's a room scale game, you want to know some more about the inputs. But some of these things will be sort of uh, smoothed over by Unity. And as much as possible, you want to make Unity do that heavy lifting for you. Now, speaking of controllers, it appears that the controllers for the Vive will not be part of Unity 5.4. So again, that means that you're going to need to use the SteamVR plugin to get the controller events and haptics and that kind of thing from the Vive controllers. That's also true for the Oculus Touch controllers. What you would want to use there is the OVR input. So what I want to show you here also is I got a couple slides for you that kind of summarize these changes. So let's jump to those slides now. Okay, so to recap that information, what is included in Unity 5.4 is a single pass VR rendering, which is also known as the double wide rendering, which is basically that they're rendering both eyes in one rendering pass rather than one eye in each pass. So that should cut down on rendering time. There will be more HMD support. So specifically they're adding support for OpenVR, which at this point is basically SteamVR, but OpenVR also has support for the Oculus Rift. And then also the PSVR support. Then there's also the multi-threaded rendering improvements, which should again see some improvements for the VR as well as everyone uh, using Unity. And then there's also gonna be the basic GPU instancing support, which is basically the fewer draw calls for geometries that are identical and which are sharing the same materials. So there's some caveats there, but in certain cases, you're gonna see an improvement there. So what's not included in Unity 5.4 is native VR controller input. So Unity is also in the process of redoing their input system, and we're not likely to see the native VR controller input being integrated with Unity until that new input system is released. So that means likely not before fall of 2016. So in the meantime, you're gonna to have to use the SDKs. As well, the room information, so the room tracking, your tracked volume, for example, in for a Vive, that's also not gonna be included in the initial release of Unity 5.4. 
So basically what this all means for you is that you'll still need the SDKs for the Vive especially, and as well as for the Rift, you're gonna, you wanna use OVR input for the touch controllers. OVR input also has some other advantages because that's gonna unify more of your Oculus Rift input devices. So for example, the Xbox One controller, the touch controllers and the, the little clicker that came with the Oculus and the touchpad on the Gear VR. Um, by using OVR input for some of your input there, you'll be able to get some gains in porting your game across platforms. Now, of course, some of those things don't translate because of course the Xbox controller isn't tracked, for example, whereas the touch controllers are. So it's not one-to-one, -one, but you can get some gains by using OVR input for your input on Oculus devices. And for Vive and for the Steam VR and Open VR devices with uh, the controllers and the, and the room information, you'll still need the Steam VR plugin for that. So that's just an overview of some of the changes that we're expecting to see in Unity 5.4, especially those that are relevant for VR. In addition to that, I've also linked a video here from the Vision Summit in 2016. When I was down there in LA, they, uh, they gave this announcement about these improvements that were coming in Unity 5.4. And if you watch this video, I've linked to the section where they talk a bit about the rendering improvements that are coming, as well as you can see some initial benchmarks of what kind of improvements you can expect to see in the rendering pipeline for VR in Unity 5.4. So that's an overview of what's coming in Unity 5.4, and we're expecting that to be out sometime in July of 2016, we hope. But in the meantime, you can get the beta, you can start using the beta if you'd like, and hopefully you won't have any serious bugs. And if you do, go over to the forums, get signed up over there, and report those bugs and help Unity figure out what needs to be fixed before they make their stable release.